Hey everybody, Nick here, and today I got a review for you of this very interesting little gentleman's folder right here. This is the um, Anthony Griffin uh, Monster Knife. First off, though, I want to thank very much my buddy Gavin Reddig for uh, loaning this my way to check out. I saw this on Instagram, and I immediately thought, I probably need to have this on the channel at some point in time, and Gavin has indulged me by sending it along. I'm really pushing the limits of a flat rate box. We'll talk about that later. Anyways, um, first off, though, size comparison. As you can see, this is a, a moderately sized size knife. Um, here it is against the Spyderco Delica. Um, this is freaking ginormous. Uh, here it is against the Ontario Rat number one and your Rat number two, which both look absolutely tiny. Um, here it is against the ZT452CF, which is, um, uh, minuscule next to this knife here. Um, here it is against the, uh, Cold Steel Voyager XL, which still manages to look small. And, um, let's see, what the heck is... Oh, the Norseman was hiding in there. Yeah. Um, and then quick a blade thickness comparison. Um, here it is against the uh, Spyderco Delicas. You can see that the blade stock on this guy is actually slightly thicker than the entire Spyderco Delica. So um, there you go. Um, next thing, a quick note. Anthony Griffin um, is a custom knife maker. He um, actually is the, has the distinction of being the very first knife maker I bought a fully custom knife from. He made a custom swayback front flipper from me many, uh, many moons ago. Um, the problem is that I asked him for blade stock that was way too thick. I didn't know a damn thing at the time. I'm still not a brilliant man, but yeah. Um, and so unfortunately, it was a knife that I didn't end up using much because it didn't slice all that well. But at the same time, it was a very nice piece. And uh, I've respected Anthony's work and followed it ever since. So uh, this is another one of his pieces. Um, and so th 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 there's that uh, very much. And uh, <laughs> sorry, guys, I'm looking at this and laughing. Um, and so let's go ahead and talk about the good, the great, the bad the ugly of this very interesting little piece right here. So first off on the good side, you know, there is a lot to love about the blade here. I mean, this is a harpoon style blade uh, with a Tonto uh, on the top here. I'm sorry, a harpoon on the top, Tonto blade. Tonto blades are really useful in everyday life in case you have to, for instance, um, scrape something off of, you know, uh, an archaeological dig with your, your shovel here. Um, it also has this little tip down here in the corner, which is really great if you're trying to open a box, because you can just cut this little part here, and so you can just barely dip the tip into a car door. Um, so that's, that's a beautiful thing. Um, this is made of D2 steel, and D2 is a very nice steel. I'm always a fan of D2, and uh, it's nice to see it in use here. Um, you can see here that Anthony has darkened this blade, done some sort of an acid stone wash or another, and I mean, you can see on there, it's actually, it's reasonably attractive, and it's very consistent. It's well done as far as acid washes go. Not a fan of any acid washes, personally, but, um, that, that, you know, as far as they go, I like this one. Um, and then finally, this does have a very nice sharpening choil down here, which also doubles as a finger choil, um, particularly for people with actually any size fingers, because holy crap, look at the size of that freaking choil. So, um, there you go. Next thing, I gotta say, the scales are actually pretty well done as well. What you've got here is a, uh, a a nice titanium that's kind of been sculpted. They've given it a little bit of a they he's given it a little bit of a rock finish which coupled with the brown anodization and the stone wash, I think is a really nice thing. Um, and I think it contrasts well with uh, the, the, the rest of the knife. Um, the the uh, standoffs here are a nice titanium orange peel at least I assume it's titanium, uh, orange peel sort of finish on there. You know, overall, it's pretty solid, and it's got a lanyard hole, which allows you uh, to uh, hang this guy off the back of a boat and then uh, duck it into the, uh, the into the sea there, and uh, then, then, then you should be able to anchor down for uh, any storm up to maybe Category 3 or so hurricanes. That's not a legal, uh, you know, claim or anything like that. But anyways, uh, so yeah, I'm liking the scales very much. Next thing, this is running on phosphor bronze washes. As you saw in the distance, assembly video. Um, this has got PB washes right in the middle there, and that's honestly, it's a beautiful thing means that the action on this guy is fairly smooth, although it's it's relatively easy to be smooth. And actually, speaking of that action, um, this has just a wonderful drop shot action here. I'm going to get this guy up on there, and you can see here, oh yeah, that's absolutely drop and shot. Mind you, the blade itself weighs a, an entire freaking pound, so it better drop shot, but still, nice drop shotty sort of action. Um, next thing, the balance on this guy is actually quite nice. I might be looking at this going, Nick, with a blade that heavy. There's no way this balances. 
But actually, the balance is just right about here in the middle. Um, and so that means that when you're gripping this guy, particularly choked up on the choil, this is actually reasonably well balanced. It's maybe a little unwieldy because you've got a huge amount of handle out the backside. I mean, really, you've got like, it feels like some kind of medieval weapon where it's like a club on the one side and a, a sword on the other side or an axe maybe more likely. Either way, um, so the balance on this guy is actually quite well done. I, I, I'm surprised he took the effort there. The clip on this is also very well done. You can see here it is a titanium clip. Um, it appears to be a milled clip of some variety or another, and it's actually got enough spring to it. It's put on a nice portion of the scales here, and it works. Um, believe it or not, if you have pockets that are sufficiently deep, mine go up to about here, um, you can get this guy in the pocket, and the clip works well, so no argument there. And then finally, um, actually, that, that, that is everything. It's got this beautiful drop shot action was the last thing I had listed. Already talked about that. Uh, but anyways, so that's the good to me, is the uh, nice drop shot action. A, a very well done clip overall. Um, it's on. Uh, it's nicely balanced with ergonomics that are actually pretty okay, even with little bitch hands, as I have here, according to some commenters. Um, it is on phosphor bronze, uh, phosphor bronze washes, that is. It's got nicely padded titanium scales here, and um, the blade on this guy is very nice in a lot of ways. To me, what's great about this knife, though, is actually that it is a well-made knife. I mean, it would be very easy for a knife produced at this size to be sort of a LOL, ha-ha quality. You slap a bit of D2 together, you slap a little titanium on there, you throw a pivot in there, it's like, oh, look, I made a knife, and everybody would look at it and laugh, ha, 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 okay, whatever. But the thing is, this is a knife that it's pretty clear that Anthony took a lot of care in making. As weird as it is, he has put a lot of craftsmanship into it. I mean, it's not perfect, absolutely not, but it is a really solid framework. A ah, frame lock. It, it's built well. It's got freaking ceramic detent ball. It's got uh, beautiful standoffs. He has done a lot of things to make this knife as good as it can possibly be, while at the same time being patently freaking absurd. I mean, it's dead centered, it's well finished, the action is smooth. Anthony has done excellent work and has made a folder that shrunk down to a usual size would actually be kind of compelling, although I'd still like the stock to be a little thinner. Um, but still, I, I love the fact that he has gone so far as to um, really make the heck out of this, to show this as a craftsmanship piece when he could have just made it a novelty and done a, a crappy job of it. So uh, to me, that's what's great here is that Anthony took the time and the effort to really make this knife very, very well, despite it being sort of a hilarious affair. Um, and by the way, if the knife's out of line, the, 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 the phone is although it's way above eye level, so I'm just guessing at what you guys see. Um, so anyways, that's what's great, is that even despite being kind of a novelty, it is a really well-made knife. On the bad side, um, it is, I, I tend to be a little bit biased. I tend to go for smaller knives, but you know, for me, this is a little bit on the big side. Um, <laughs> Seriously. Holy crap. I, I, I talk about knives of being a little bit big to carry on a regular basis, but <laughs> it says reset my calibration for too big to carry. Because holy crap. Um so that's that's something. Next thing, this is probably not a great knife for the lunchroom. Um you could pull this out the lunchroom and um yeah, I don't know how that would go, but uh, let me know once you get back from the unemployment office. Um, next thing, this is unfortunately going to fail the New York City uh, test for uh, basically whether something is, well, I don't know what that is. It's basically w whether the cop likes you or not. But anyways, if you hold this up and then shake it a little bit, you're going to see that the knife actually drops open here. Um, and in fact, I found that that is probably the best way to open this knife is using gravity. You grab onto the blade or you grab onto the handle is the other option. Give it a little shake. And there you go. The knife is open and locked open. Um, this is going to make it perhaps a little bit less legal. Canadians might have some trouble importing this. Although I don't even know that they view this as a pocket knife. I I'm just not sure. But either way, that's uh, that's going to be counting against you in some jurisdictions, as if that's why this would be a problem. Next thing, this is a little bit on the heavy side. And as a matter of fact, um, when I got this guy, I, <laughs> I knew it was coming, but I reach into my freaking P.O. box and I pull this flat rate box out of there and it's just like, oh my god! <laughs> Um, this knife is ginormously heavy. Um, this scale will not take it. It will not be measured by that scale. So instead, I'm going to grab my, uh, my postal scale here, and we're going to use it instead. Put this guy on here. Uh, let's 
zero the scale. We are coming in here at 2.1, I'm sorry, 2 pounds and 1 ounce. 1.1 ounces. Holy crap, is this guy heavy? I mean, the blade alone weighs more than a pound on this guy. Um, 34 ounces is absolutely and totally freaking absurd to me. Um, and yeah, so that's that's going to be a thing. Um, next thing, the blade stock is maybe a little bit on the thick side here. Um, that's uh, just over half an inch. Um, that's, that's maybe a little much. I feel like there aren't many tasks where that's called for. Next thing, um, this guy is, oh, I'm sorry, um, because of that blade stock being very thick, one issue that this is that is more serious and might even be called a design flaw if this were meant to be a knife for everyday carry is the fact that the back of the blade is uh, very easily exposed because frankly anytime you grab for this knife you're just as likely to have at least when you've got fingers my size um you're very likely to slip in there and touch the back of the blade i've always said to makers that one of the downsides of thick blade stock is that it's very very easy to accidentally cut yourself on the blade while the knife is closed holy crap is this showing that off so, uh, yeah, considering that your fingers can uh, go all the way through the damn knife, um, it's relatively easy to cut yourself on the blade stock. Next thing, this guy is um, pretty pricey. Um, this costs around 750 bucks to have made. Um, and that is uh, not something that I'm particularly in love with. But the thing is, actually, from some perspectives, that's real value. Um, we generally don't talk about knives this way, but um, knife, ma knife making can actually be evaluated in dollars per pound. Um, the uh, Grimsmo Norseman actually turns out to be the most expensive knife per pound in my collection. A pound of Grimsmo Norseman would be $2,960. Um, the uh, Spyderco Dragonfly actually comes in at uh, $1,066 per pound of Dragonfly, whereas this guy is absolutely a bargain, coming in at only $357 per pound. You know what? At that price, I think you're making money. Um... <laughs> Look, it's pricey, but before you go crapping on the guy, is it really any more absurd than a fancy mechanical watch that's doing the same thing as a $12 G-Shock? No, it's not. So anyways, I digress. Um, Next thing, the uh, harpoon on the back here needs a little chamfering, a little sharp up there. Um, Next thing, the um, finger grooves. Unfortunately, so it's got these finger grooves for fingers... I don't know whose fingers this is meant for. Maybe like Hellboy with the big rock hand. Um, these finger grooves are just designed for him. But unfortunately, the finger grooves kind of interfere with the thumb opening hole. Um, and frankly, the strength of the detent as you're gripping this guy does. So that's why I tend to use the uh, the gravity deployment method rather than anything else on this guy. <laughs> um, so yeah, they, they, there you go. Um, next thing, the... Um, uh, there is actually a substantial amount of lock stick that you see in here, um, and you've been seeing this kind of throughout. Um, part of this is because I just cleaned it up, and, uh, th th there was some Sharpie placed on there, and I did clean that off. Um, I'm gonna keep reapplying the Sharpie, and I think it'll probably get back to the point it was where I got it, where it was actually pretty reasonably done, um, in terms of the stick, but that is something I'd like to see him work on. I mean, carbonizing this much lock face, yeah, I can see that being problematic, but at the same time, it's definitely an issue. Then finally, on the bad side, this guy is very, very thick behind the edge. Um, this guy is actually thicker behind the edge than the Spydeco Delica is thick at the spine of the knife. Um, that's kind of a problem. Um, and as such, this is not an incredible slicer. Got a piece of paper here and... I mean, you can kind of tear the paper with it, but that's kind of what you're doing. I mean, you can see that the cut here is really tearing uh, more than anything else. Um, so it'll do the trick. It'll puncture the paper, but you're really ripping with this kind of an edge thickness. So that's, um, frankly, it's thick in the general, not just in the edge. So anyways, that's a little bit frustrating for me, and I do wish that maybe the grind was a little more hollow, allowing this guy to slice a little bit better, but not a huge deal. Um, <laughs> well, okay, this is a huge deal, but given what you get here, okay, whatever. Um, so that to me is what's bad here, is that it is very thick behind the edge, and frankly, it's thick behind the everything. Um, it is got some lock stick on it that I'm not loving with the um the, the finger grooves are interfering with the opening hole although gravity works better anyways the uh, back of the blade is exposed when the knife is closed because the the scales are way far apart it is uh, a little bit pricey, although if you look at it pound for pound, it's kind of a bargain um it is uh, absolutely heavy the heaviest knife I have ever handled one of the heaviest knives I've ever heard of frankly. Um, it is going to fail the New York uh, hold the blade test uh, kind of thing and it is going to be. Well, I don't know, maybe a little bit big for some people, especially if they have preferences running towards small for me. Um, on the ugly front, this knife is completely impractical for every purpose ever. Um, this is a knife that is 
nearly impossible to carry. I, I was able to get it into my pocket, but then you've got two pounds in one of your pockets, which is not a great thing. And frankly, the amount, this gap in the back here was big enough that my phone and wallet could get inside there. That's not something that's going to make this super practical for most people. Uh, but it's so thick that it is just not a great cutter. I mean, absolutely, if you're trying to, you know, open up a car door, this is absolutely going to be a decent choice for you. But yeah, not really. Um, it's the, I mean, frankly, the only thing that this knife is good for is making your friends and family die laughing. I showed this to my wife, and she was just like, what the hell are you doing, Nick? Come on! Um, and that, 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 that's accurate. Um, and so, honestly, that's, that's what's ugly to me, is that this is completely and totally impractical for every purpose, roughly ever. But by God, it does put a smile on the face. Um, so, final conclusions. This is a knife that is not particularly aimed at practical everyday carry, in my estimation. I think we can all pretty much agree on that. Um, it is much more expensive than much more practical pieces. It is uncarryable, it is heavy, huge, and not much for cutting, let's be real here. Maybe it's a sculpture, maybe it's a modern art, maybe it's a meta-commentary on the insistence of knife companies to use insanely thick blade stock on, on a regular basis. Look, I don't know. But the simple fact is, um, it's not pretending. There is no part of this knife that is trying to pass itself off as a functional cutting tool. It's just a piece of craziness, and I, I kind of like that. It's a gimmick, but it knows it, and, and he's still done a great job. And the thing is, I do kind of like it. At some completely hilarious level, I, I find this knife really amusing. It is very seldom that I open a box in the post office and just bust out laughing, making everybody in the room look at me, Um, eh, which is scary when you're holding one of these guys. Um, And the knife world, frankly, takes itself too seriously on a regular basis, and here we have the antidote. This is a knife that people are going to look at and just go like, okay, yeah, you guys are freaking nuts. And we are indeed. But the other reason I like it is because I think it is a pretty well-made object. Anthony has done very nice work here. Um, and this is sh showing off on a massive scale. I mean, literally a massive scale. He has made a huge novelty knife, but it seems like to the very best of his ability. And you know what? I do respect that a lot. I mean, this is a man who can do something completely absurd with a level of mastery that's kind of impressive. Um, and I, I, I absolutely respect that. Um, I can't say I'm recommending this guy because, well, yeah, I mean... Yeah, but the thing is, if you are after something huge, thick, and crazy, I, if you want it a little more practical, you might consider the Medford Marauder, and I cannot believe I just gave that sentence. If you want it actually practical, consider the Medford Marauder skinny. But if you're looking for something that's so over the top, that's not even pretending to not be modern art, then by God, um, this is a monstrously reasonable choice. So thank you, Gavin. Thank you, Anthony, for... <laughs> <laughs> this and everybody else have yourselves an absolutely monstrously wonderful rest of your day. Bye now.